What's up guys, welcome back to another electric skateboard video. Today we are diving into the Stormcore 680D Plus, how to set it up and how to program it. To start off, we will plug in our phase wires. Um, color and order do not matter at all, so don't worry about that. And then one more thing to note is that your sensor wire needs to stay on the same side as the phase wires of the same motor. Next, we'll plug in our receiver for a remote. One thing to check is that your RX and TX cables are leading from the receiver to the same incorrect ports on the storm core itself. So we'll plug that into the UART port there. And then after that, we will plug in our power button. Power button goes into the port on the other side. And then finally, we plug in our XC90 and actually give power to the storm core. Now this little, the way that they put this is, isn't the most convenient, so it might take a little bit of jiggling, but you can get it in there. Now your storm core should power on, no problem. Okay, so now that we've got all of our hardware connected, now it's time to actually start programming everything. So there's two options you, you can do. Um, one option is you can use your phone. There is the VESC tool app for Android and iPhone, and you can do this wirelessly. You can also do it with a computer. Now there is a VEST tool floating around uh, for Mac. It's not the most reliable, so I don't recommend it. So if you are gonna use a computer, use a PC. Um, this case, the, for right now, for today, uh, the Mac is working for me, so I am gonna do that for this video, but keep in mind, it's not always reliable, and you may need to do a different method. So um, first things first, we're going to actually plug in the Storm Core with the USB cable, uh, USB-C to USB-C, and plug it here into the port on the actual board and then we're going to power on the storm core. Now, keep in mind, you do have to actually have power connected to your uh, storm core. We've had pictures show up in the past where people plug the USB straight into the actual storm core, but don't actually plug their battery into it and expect the storm core to be able to be programmed just running power off the USB, and but that doesn't work. So, okay, so first things first, we've got that plugged in. Uh, now we're gonna head over here to the VEST tool and we're going to click Auto Connect. Um, and as you can see, bottom right-hand corner, it's got all that. And before I do anything, I always come over here and I uh, update our firmware. Now, technically this unit is running the most up-to-date firmware, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like anyway. So we've got Stormcore 60D Plus, we've got our default VESC software, and we're going to um, actually upload it. So this is gonna clear all my settings out, so I'm gonna have to start all over again. And do I wanna continue? Yes, I do. So now it's gonna scan the CAN bus, it's gonna make sure we have both sides here and it's going to start erasing our bootloader, as you can see. And now we wait. Now it's way faster to do this connected to over USB compared to your phone. If you do it on your phone, it will take like, I swear, 10 minutes or longer. Here, it should only take like 45 seconds or so. So it's a lot better. Um, here we go, yeah, this, is, this takes so much more time on the actual phone. Actually, it's taking longer than I expected on the computer, but it takes even longer over your phone. So just keep in mind, don't freak out that it's taking forever and just hold tight. So then we'll come back when this is done. Okay, so now as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it was kind of scary for a second, we're all good. So it says the firmware upload is done, you must wait at least 10 seconds before unplugging power, otherwise the firmware will get corrupted and your vest will become bricked. If that happens, you will need an SWD programmer to recover it. So in other words, don't unplug your battery while it's in this little process of loading the new firmware. So just hit okay. And we'll go back to our Welcome and Wizards page and we will hit auto connect again. As you can see, bottom right hand corner, we've got firmware 5.3 loaded, so we're good to go. So now, the first thing I do is you will run motor detection. So we're gonna come over here and hit set, uh, set up motors FOC. And now at this point, this is the new VEST tool app. It looks just like the iPhone, which is really nice. Um, would you like to restore VEST and all VEST over CAN bus to the default setting before proceeding? I, I always just hit no. I, it doesn't really matter. We're about to change everything anyways. So we're gonna go and hit eSkate. Next, we are a medium outrunner. And that's pretty much all, in this case, in the vast majority of uh, motors for electric skateboard uses would be a medium outrunner. So hit next and yes. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna start actually plugging in uh, information about our battery. So in this case, I'm using a 12S4P P42A pack. I'm gonna be putting the information in that pertains to my battery, but your battery may be different. So unless you're using a 12S4P, P42A, do not just copy my settings because you could definitely damage your battery or your storm core. So I made a nice little sheet we can go through together. So the way that we get our information to plug into the storm core is, is pretty easy. So 
it, originally we're just going to start filling this out. So I've got number of cells in series, I have a 12S, so that would be 12. Number of cells in parallel, 4P, that would be 4. Capacity per cell or uh, in amp hours. So the way that I find all this information is I find the data sheet of my actual cells that are in my battery. Now, uh, otherwise you could also reference the uh, website where you actually purchased your battery from. They will also have all that information in the description. But in this case, I'm gonna use the actual data sheet so you guys can follow along if you have some other random cells that you guys are using. So capacity per cell in amp hours. So in this case, it would be 4.2 milliamp hours or 4,200 milliamp hours or 4.2 amp hours. Max, max discharge per cell is in this case, continuous at 45 amps, we'll put 45. And max charge per cell, in this case, charge current standard is 4.2 amps. So that's what I'll put as well. Okay, so now that we've got our spreadsheet all filled out, we should have all the information we need to actually fill out the, all the settings here. So again, battery cells in series, I'm going to enter 12, which again, you'd enter yours, it may not be the same as mine. Battery capacity, now this is your total battery capacity, and I actually don't have this written on here, but it would be four times your um, capacity here. So in this case, this would be 16.8, 16.8 amp hours, cool. All right, hit next, and battery limits. Okay, so it's pretty much letting you know that you need to set battery limits. Um, I always fill this out, so in my, in my case, my gearing ratio here would be 15 and those are 66 tooth pulleys. Good, 100, these are actually 200 millimeter wheels. These are eight inch tires. Okay, and motor poles, we should leave this at 14 unless your motor uh, specifically says to change it, but almost all of them are uh, 14 poles. And if it asks for motor pole pairs, you put seven, but in this case, it's just asking for poles, you put 14, and then we'll hit run detection and we want to detect all motors over a CAN bus. We'll hit okay. So now your motors are gonna make some not very awesome sounds. They're gonna screech a little bit, um, but don't worry, stick with it. And processing and give it a second. I hear it already. There we go. Okay. And again, they're gonna spin up. They're gonna make some calculations. And good. All right, and then finally, okay, so now it's gonna spit out some information. A few things you wanna check to make sure it did come through accurately is, okay, so here's all of our settings here that, that actually came through. We wanna double check our motor current. These motors usually do detect around 70 amps, so 68 here, 67 there, that's good. We wanna make sure our sensors came through, hall sensors and hall sensors. Once in a while, even though you've got everything connected perfectly, the sensor will, will not come through. It'll stay sensorless even though there is a hall sensor. If that happens, just rerun motor, motor detection and we're good to go. Okay, so there's that and we'll hit okay. Okay, so now we wanna make sure that our wheels and our motors are spinning the, uh, the correct direction. So now uh, it gives us an option to preview what our motor direction is. So on the very first motor, we're gonna hit forward and that is spinning the correct direction, so that's good, and we're gonna hit forward on the next one. And that one's spinning the wrong direction, so we'll hit the inverted switch, hit forward again, confirm that it's actually changed, and we will hit finish. Okay, so that's that from, for motor detection. Motors are all good, but we do need to add some more information about a few other things. So we're gonna go back to our motor settings. Um, under general, we're gonna actually start with um, our current settings. Now again, I've tried to make this as easy as we possibly can. We've filled in all this information, um, for our battery limits, what are we looking for? We're looking for our motor current max. We're gonna actually leave those at default. I never really mess with these too much. Whatever they uh, detect at is what I leave them at. You can boost them, but keep in mind that we do have to keep them under what LaCroix's recommendations are. So in this case, um, the recommendations are for our motors, you wanna max, uh, max them out here at 75 amps. So, and negative 70 amps. So we want, don't, don't want to exceed those. They say that if you keep the settings at that, um, at that level, your storm core will last a long time and will not uh, be damaged. So um, in this case, we're underneath that limit. So we're good there. Um, okay, so battery current max. We've got that here, battery current max. Uh, so we want to choose the lowest value here. So one of them is a battery limit. So our, our battery can handle um, 180 amp output um, on each side would be 90 
or uh, the storm core actually can handle 65 amps on each side. So because this is the lower one, the storm core does limit us a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go and put 65 amps here. Now remember, we're doing each side one at a time. So um, re in reality, we're pushing double this, but each side um, will divide it in half. So, Okay, so now we're gonna, going to do our battery current max regen. So in this case, again, we're gonna use our spreadsheet. Um, we've entered in our max charge times number of parallel uh, divided by two, again, because there's two sides and we get 8.4. Now our storm core limit is negative 20, so we could push this farther, but our battery is limited to 8.4. So we will do negative 8.4 here. And remember that's well over uh, 16 in reality, but because there's two, 8.4. All right, that's good. And we'll go over here and we'll hit save, save our settings from motor configuration. And now we'll come over to voltage. Now again, we've got our voltage settings here. Um, I run my cells maybe on the lower side, but um, this is what I do. So for a 12S battery, now again, if you were to update to 10, it'll update your settings there for you. Um, so voltage cutoff start 36.6. So that's what I'm going to put. 36.6 and our voltage end is 33.6, 33.6. All right, and we will write that as well to our motors, motor configuration. Um, RPM we can leave, wattage we can leave, temperature, all that, all that we can usually leave. Um, but now before we move on, we do want to change to the other side. So we programmed the first half of our storm core, now we have to do the second half and we pretty much do that by switching over here. So now I'm going to read the current settings on this side of the storm core. And again, you can see our settings are back to default. So we're going to input the exact same settings we did before. So in this case, this would be 65 amps, negative 8.4 amps. Oops, not negative, there we go. 8.4 um, voltage, we're gonna do the same exact thing. 36.6, 33.6. And we'll write that to our motor configuration. Okay, good. Uh, that's pretty much it for our um, in, like our settings there. So now we'll continue moving on. Um, we usually can skip through this stuff. This is a more um, specific advanced settings that you don't usually have to mess with right away. Um, so now we're gonna get into our app settings. Now this is where things get a little tricky for some. Um, so in this case, I'm using a VX2 Pro. Um, which uses a UART connection. So I will make sure my app to use is set to UART. Now, many times, this is a big hangup for a lot of people. When you update your firmware, sometimes this gets set to no app. So make sure you actually set it to UART. I've also found that PPM and UART, that setting would normally look for PPM um, remotes and UART remotes. For whatever reason, it just doesn't work that well. So I always just select um, which remote I want. So in this case, I actually have a Hoyt Puck receiver and a VX2 Pro receiver, both plugged into the storm core. So if I do wanna use one or the other, I just have to open up my phone and change this app to use really quick and I have two different remotes, which is kinda of cool. And now if we scroll down to best remote, here's something that we also have to do. Control type, again, once you update, you usually get set to off, which is why if I turn my remote on, nothing's gonna happen. So I come down to current, no reverse there. I usually leave all this stuff normal. Um, use Smart Reverse, that's a, totally an option or preference that you guys have to pick. Um, so use Smart Reverse, that's pretty much like when you hit the, when, once you're hitting the brakes and you've come to a complete stop, it'll just slowly go backwards, which a lot of people feel like it actually smooths the brakes out a little bit. So I actually usually leave it on and usually leave it at its default setting. Um, yep, and now we'll go on to Throttle Curve. Now again, this is totally up to you and it's will made differ based on your setup. But this is pretty much how sensitive or uh, pretty much how sensitive your throttle is and how, how sensitive your brakes are. So I usually go to negative 15 on both. That's what I, I that's what I like. I kind of how the, I like the way that feels. But again, your settings may be completely different based on your board, your wheel size, your gearing ratio, all that stuff might be different. So the only way you guys are gonna get this to feel right is to change the setting, go ride your board, see how it feels, make setting, uh, make changes to your settings, go back out and repeat until you find something that you really like. Again, once you change your settings, hit, uh, hit right app configuration. And that's about it, everybody.
that's pretty much it. There's not really a lot else to do. I mean, we've gone through all your motor settings, we've done your app settings. Um, I know there's a ton more settings in here, um, but there's a lot of, but 95% of us don't really need a lot of these very, very specific settings. So I wouldn't stress about it too much. Um, one other thing though, if you are not using a UART remote and you are gonna use a PPM based remote, you do need to go through here and hit the setup input um, wizard here. And you'll run through these settings. Uh, it's all very intuitive. It, it goes step by step on how to do it. But pretty much all we have to do is actually map the throttle to our remotes. So I don't have the white puck here in front of me now, but if I did, we would go through here, hit PPM, next. And what it's gonna ask us to do is it wants to know a couple things. One, we wanna set this to current, no reverse. I think in this case would be with brake. Um, and what it wants us to do is map or tell it what the throttle is doing. So we want it, it's gonna ask us to push that throttle all the way forward. It's gonna look for that. Then we're gonna pull the throttle all the way back. It's gonna look for that. And then it knows kind of the range of that throttle. And then it'll just write that for you. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it. Those are all the settings that we usually adjust when we're building our boards. I know there's a lot more settings in here, but 95% of us don't need to mess with a lot of those settings. Um, so if you follow this video, you should be able to get your board up and running, no problem. And again, I can't stress this enough. Do not just sit here and plug in my exact numbers. I made an awesome spreadsheet for you guys to use. We will leave a link to it in the description down below if you wanna download it and plug in your data. But please remember that your battery, unless it's an exact 12S4 P, P4A2A pack, your settings are gonna be different. So keep that in mind, plug your numbers into the spreadsheet, copy your spreadsheet, don't copy me. Um, and otherwise, this is your pretty much ready to go. So if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, put them down in the comments section below. We're very active down there. We try to help everybody with their builds. Um, but otherwise, you should be up and running. Hopefully this wasn't too hard. Hopefully it doesn't feel too daunting of a task, but there we go. Again, if you have any questions, let us know, and we will see you in the next one.